Can I just start by saying this movie is one of my favourite films to come out of Indian cinema in a number of years. It's just wow. brilliant. I'm so heartened and happy to hear that. Thank you so much. That means a lot. It's incredible and it's so poignant. It addresses so many real issues, body shaming, colorism, sexism. When you're tackling such massive ideologies that are really quite deep rooted, is there a conversation you have to have with your cast to prepare them for that? You know, it was, um, I was firstly blessed with a tremendous cast, um, you know, and Shanu Sharma, who's the casting director, deserves full credit for actually giving me such eclectic and fantastic artists. Um, you know, from Dharamji, Jayaji, Shabana ji, uh, to Tota Roy Chaudhary, Chudni Ganguly, Shitti Jhok, Ahmed Bashir, Anjali Anand, Namit Das, Abhinav Sharma. The cast, besides Rocky and Rani, I was talking about the ensemble, they were also fantastic that when they all read the script, I remember Shabana ji telling me when she read it, and she says, you know, Karan, it's a very clever film. I said, clever, why do you say that? She says, because in the garb of entertainment, you're saying a lot, but Absolutely. never but never preaching it, never preaching it, never making it look like a sermon, but you're saying so much. She said, that's why I call it a clever film. And I was like, well, that's a first. No one's ever called a film of mine clever <laughs> before. So I'm like, okay, there are lots of firsts in this film, starting with the fact that Shabana has me found it clever. No, and she's absolutely right. I think it's that balance that really makes this film work and really helps it strike a chord in a way that doesn't feel like you're sitting in a three hour yes. <laughs> um, I know you've never really shied away from telling stories that challenge the norm or really sort of play on the thoughts of society. When you're creating a film that really goes for the jugular, but still aims to leave a lasting impression, how do you strike that balance? You know, the, the, in my DNA, I'm completely a big fan of Hindi and Indian cinema. Um, I've grown up watching cinema from the time that I can remember since, since I was six or seven years old. All I've done is watch Hindi cinema of the year, um, Indian cinema from everywhere, heard only Hindi film music. Um, so that sense of mainstream is very much in my own DNA. Um, yeah. But because um, I constantly believe in uh, the process of evolution, I, I believe you have to constantly grow, not just as a filmmaker, but also as a human being. Uh, so I've, I've made so many corrective measures to my personality and to my ideologies um, in the last two decades. Um, a lot of those transformative thoughts made their way into this film through the absolute genius of my writing team, uh, Shashank Ketan, uh, Sumit Roy, Ishita Moitra. Uh, they really gave the film the gravitas that it needed emotionally. And then I gave it the, the, the scale and the grandeur and the songs, all of which I absolutely wow. love. <laughs> you know, I love it. Like the, whether it's the Shippon Sari in Kashmir or it's the big dance set pieces or it's the high, like tuned up to 11 melodrama. These are things I've loved grown up on and unabashedly, unapologetically wanted to do. But within the domain of that, I also felt like it was critical for me to say something. Um, filmmakers are, are in a very, very privileged position where they can communicate so much through uh, their movies and stories. And I feel like if I don't take leverage of that privilege, then I haven't really justified being a filmmaker. So I'm glad I could do that with this film. Definitely. And I think, as I've said, I think that is really the sort of perfect balance that you have to find. I think when you're covering so many topics, it's so easy for it to come across. Like oh, sure, sure. It's heavy, but it doesn't. And I think that's what really works about it. Um, so I know you've spoken a lot about these characters being born out of personal experience and, you know, a part of you sort of being placed in each of the characters to some degree. Does you know, implementing your own experiences, your own vulnerabilities, does it amplify the pressure to get it right? Or does it just make it even that much more of a passion project? No, in fact, it makes it easier because uh, like the character of Anjaliana who played Golu in the film, um, I've been a plus size child for a large part of my, my childhood. Um, I was also um, uh, an effeminate child uh, and have combated some kind of like shaming as a result of that. So I believe Tota Roy Chaudhary's uh, the Kathak uh, uh, dancing father and Anjali and and um, who played Golu, but very close to my heart as characters, you know. I've also, uh, up close and personal, viewed many households in where I've seen the, you know, patriarchy that is, that's, that is, that is just seems to many as the way of life. And I'm like, to me, I come from very progressive parenting. 
where um, uh, we never had a patriarchal household. My, yeah. mother, my mother was really pretty much the leader at home. And my father and I were like literally puppies following her all around the place. Like doing, <laughs> So I grew up and I grew up with a group of aunts um, that were all super progressive and all said the most like amazingly uh, like uh, progressive things. Uh, so I never once felt that these characters were uncomfortable for me to express. Having said that, I haven't done this in my earlier films because I was following the norms of the cinema I grew up on then. But yeah. with age, age and evolution, you go you go back into your basic roots and your basic ideologies. And uh, so for me, I was never uncomfortable. I was at home because at home, this is how things are. I love that. And just to sort of wrap up, there are so many brilliant parallels and references in Rocky Rani to Kabi Kashi Kabi Gum. And yes. it's... I think it's a feast for anybody who loves your films. Was there anything you brought from the set of Gavi Kushi Kavi Gum to this one that really helped guide that? Or was it just kind of, you know, like brainwaves? <laughs> just, no, no, no. Just some of the dialogue. When I made Jayaji say Kehdiana, bus Kehdi, it was yeah. like, I mean, I was like, we all in the set got so excited. Like it was, that, so that was an improvisation. There was um, an audible gasp in the cinema. Yeah, loved it. So there was an audible gasp and on our set as well. I because it. it was not in the dialogue. And she said, she said, bus Kedia. And I was like, oh my God, we have to add the Kedia, na Kedia. She was like, oh God, you're making me say, say uh, my husband's line. And I was yeah. like, like we're flipping it all on its head, you know. Um, there were I've done many. There are many nods to many films, uh, not just my own in the film. Uh, yeah. You know, there's such a throwback feeling uh, because um, there's such an old. It's an old and homage to nostalgia to current filmmakers like Yash Chopra and Sanjay Leela Bansali. Um, I felt like this film was m much more than just a story, but it's organic celebration of cinema that I have loved, grown up on, and continue to love today. Definitely. And it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Karen, for your time. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Thank and you. Congratulations. For